Biggest pitch of the year here for the Mariners. Three and two, bases loaded. Seashack, the pitch. Base hit left field. On October 2nd, 2021, the Seattle Mariners were on a magical march towards the playoffs. They went 18 and eight in September, the fifth most a number of wins by a team in that month. The Mariners fought their way out of obscurity and placed themselves in the crowded wildcard race. Unfortunately, the Mariners lost their final game of the season, removing any chance for a playoff berth. However, despite missing the playoffs for the 20th straight season, this team provided something their fan base had rarely seen through their playoff drought, hope. The 2021 Mariners didn't make the playoffs, but it was a huge step in the right direction for this franchise. Although the difficulty of fully taking that next step is something this team has struggled with in the past. Between 2004 and 2020, the Mariners ended a season with a record over 500 five times. However, all of these records were followed up by sub 500 seasons. How could the 2022 Mariners ensure they could truly build off this 90 win season? Well, well, first off, they needed to address the elephant in the room, the run differential. A 90 win season with a negative run differential? That's absurd. In fact, the 2021 Mariners were one of only four teams in MLB history to have a negative run differential in a 90 win season. While most of these runs were surrendered in the month of May and they were one of the league's best in winning one run games, this isn't really something you can repeat in consecutive seasons. Okay, let's start with pitching. In particular, starting pitching. Separating the numbers between the starters and relievers, it was clear the rotation had a larger need for an upgrade. Well, why not sign the reigning Cy Young winner? Just before the lockout began, the Mariners signed AL Cy Young, Robbie Ray, to a five-year deal. Just like that, the Mariners have an ace in their rotation. Although, apart from Ray, the Mariners didn't add anyone else apart from a few relievers on minor league contracts. The majority of their focus was placed on a hitting core that ranked towards the bottom of the league in OPS and OPS+. They hit plenty of home runs, but outside of that, there was work to be done. So, just a few days before the Robbie Ray signing, they traded for all-star second baseman Adam Frazier. Right before Frazier's midseason trade to San Diego, he led the league in hits, so he was a solid candidate for a bounce-back season. Then, after the lockout, the Mariners made one of the headline trades of the offseason. They traded for one of the most sought-after bats on the trade market, Jesse Winker. In the same deal, they received Eugenio Suarez, a 30-home run third baseman who could take over over the position left behind by the retiring Kyle Seeger. Overall, the Mariners had a positive offseason, but there's someone I haven't mentioned yet. The 0-2. Swing destroyed. This is going to the pit city, baby. That is destroyed, clobber to God. Outfielder Julio Rodriguez was not only the top prospect in the Mariners' farm system, he was one of the league's top three prospects. With question marks surrounding guys like Jared Kelenic and Kyle Lewis, J-Rod was playing his way onto the opening day roster, and that's exactly what happened. On opening day, Rodriguez was the starting center fielder along with a few new faces like Frazier, Winker, Suarez, and opening day starter, Robbie Ray. After winning the first two games of the year, the Mariners ended April on a four-game losing streak. This slump continued into May as the Mariners were swept by the Astros and Rays, two potential playoff teams. Although it wasn't just playoff teams the Mariners were struggling against. As the month of May came to a close, they were swept by the Red Sox and lost a series to the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's, the most openly tanking team in the league. This loss put the Mariners in last place and nine games under 500. We're going through some painful times right now, said Mariners manager Scott Service. We have to make some adjustments here, and it needs to happen quick. The Mariners had quite a few problems during this time. First off, while WRC Plus said the Mariners were an above average offense, they were in the bottom half of the league in actual runs scored, with much of the problem coming from the team's slugging percentage. However, the pitching staff wasn't helping either. As they were not only in the bottom third in ERA, they allowed the most home runs across the league. On an individual basis, apart from Logan Gilbert, the starters were inconsistent at best. Also, some relievers who were expected to be notable pieces in the bullpen were struggling 
struggling too. It was still early enough in the season to make the right adjustments, but it needed to happen sooner rather than later. Well, unfortunately, it got worse before it got better. After the losing series against the A's, the Mariners lingered in fourth place in the division, eventually culminating in a record 10 games under 500 on June 19th their worst record of the season so far. However, something intriguing occurred in this game. For some reason, the stadium's fire alarm went off. While this may seem inconsequential, is it a stretch to say this alarm signaled a change in the Mariner season? In the five games following this alarm, they won five in a row, but the streak ended on the day of the infamous Angels Mariners brawl. Fun fact, I was actually supposed to go to this game, and I'm still kinda mad I couldn't go. Well, after this brawl, the Angels and Mariners went in completely opposite directions. I've already made a video of what happened to the Angels, so I think you can guess what the Mariners were able to do. The 2 0 pitch. Line drive! And the Mariners win this ball game! Suarez in the air! Left field! Will it stay fair? Good vibes only! This is drilled. Down the line. Is it high enough? It is gone! Cal Raleigh just continues to mash! Between June 28th and July 17th, the Mariners won 17 of 18 games, including a 14-game winning streak that ended at the All-Star break. Following the fire alarm moment in mid-June, the Mariners became a different team. In particular, Robbie Ray looked like a Cy Young winner again, and he was leading a rotation that was finally coming into its own. Also, the bullpen had guys that were playing well, like Andres Munoz, Paul Sewald, and Diego Castillo. As for the lineup, much of them were playing well too. Production was coming from all over the field, but there was one player who was head and shoulders above the rest, and that was Julio Rodriguez. In just half a season, Rodriguez Rodriguez had turned his beginning of the year slump into all-star level production, joining his teammate Ty France in the all-star game festivities. The Mariners had gone from 10 games under 500 to 9 games over 500 in a month's time, solidifying their spot in the wildcard race. However, with half a season left to go, they needed reinforcements to build upon their progress. They had already traded for power bat Carlos Santana, so they turned their sights to the pitching market. Well, they traded for arguably the most soft after pitcher on the market starting pitcher Luis Castillo. I can't imagine it was easy for the Mariners front office to part with the package of prospects they sent over, but you kind of have to for a guy like Luis Castillo. We've got a chance to do something really big here this year. You have to step out and take a chance once in a while if you ultimately want to get the reward. Although Castillo wasn't the only player they traded for. They traded for Kurt Casale as catching depth, took a chance on Jake Lamb, and added pitcher Matthew Boyd, who grew up a big Mariners. Mariners fan. Also, Mitch Haniger, a 39 home run hitter back in 2021, was coming back from the IL after an injury at the beginning of the season. Still, there was the question every team deals with after the trade deadline. Did they do enough? Overall, this was an above average team, but the wildcard fight was shaping up to be contentious. Well, the Mariners followed their best month of the year in July with their second best month of the year in August. Much of the success from this month was thanks to the pitching staff as the Mariners were one of only six teams to allow 100 or less runs during this month. The best example of this pitching staff's dominance came on August 9th against the Yankees, a game some say was the game of the year. This was a matchup between Luis Castillo and Garrett Cole, a pitching duel where neither pitcher allowed any runs. However, once the starters were taken out, this is when the game reached another level. Line, a late package, back to second base, they get two! This is one, two. Swing and a comebacker right to the mound. Peralta will go to second for one. Relay to first. It's in time. Snare. What a play by Brash. Runs down Trevino. Crawford's got it now. Suarez now playing second. Here it comes. In between. Kiner for left foot running in circles. It's out of the big pass. It's another double play. Bags back. Two out. Scoreless tie. Bottom of the 12th inning. 3 2 pitch. He got him. Got him swinging and Suarez. Snaps his bat in two. Base is loaded with one out. Oh, ho, ho, what a silly hack. Crashes 0-2. Ground ball to Crawford. Not where you want to hit it. 
we have had so many chances in this ball game tonight. O2 coming. And you're right. This was the Mariners 60th win of the season, and they ended the month with win number 72, as they had the fourth best record in the American League. Coupled with the fact the Mariners had arguably the easiest schedule left among American League contenders, the Mariners were in a great spot, especially because of some news that came out just before the month ended. On August 26th, Julio Rodriguez signed a multi-year extension. Yes, this is probably the most complicated contract I've ever seen, but if J-Rod lives up to his full potential, he has a chance to become a Mariners legend. With about a month left in the regular season, there was just one thing left for this team to do, make the playoffs. 1-1, one, one, did you know? Like 2021, the final games of the Mariners season were filled with dramatic moments. But this time around, they were able to follow through and clinch their first playoff spot in over 20 years. The man who sent this team to the playoffs, Cal Raleigh, was one of the many hitters who had a vital role in turning this offense into one of the best in the American League. Raleigh turned into a premier catcher, J-Rod emerged into a superstar, Suarez had a bounce back season. Then there's France, Moore, Crawford, Haggerty, Haniger, Santana. They all played great. This group played well defensively too. They weren't a lead or anything, but they got the job done. Then there's the pitching staff, a group that didn't rank as highly as the hitters did, but they were still a formidable bunch. Castillo and Ray are a great one-two punch, especially if Ray can turn back into the Cy Young winner he was in 2021. Well, these two are going to spend the next few years together because Castillo signed a five-year extension a couple weeks before the season ended. As for the other starters, Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, and Chris Flexen all had good seasons. Then you've got the bullpen headlined by guys like Andres Munoz, Paul Sewald, Matt Brash, and Penn Murphy, among others. There's a great foundation here to build off of, but that's a discussion for the offseason. The Mariners were finally in the playoffs, and they were hungry for success. Right away, you get an important sequence of at-bats here. Suarez, line drive, and that is a fair ball. And what a great start for this team. He drives that one deep to right field, and it is gone. On the ground to second. Frazier's got it, and the Seattle Mariners are one win away from advancing to the division series. 8-1, Toronto on top, and rally towels are going crazy. Counts it 1-1. It's a good swing on a deep drive, left field, backing up, tap the up. He's looking on the track, and that is gone! That's a three-run homer! It's not easy to make these calls. Raleigh into left center field. That's going to be another hit for Cal Raleigh, but the Mariners on the board again. Crawford to center field, not deep. Sprinting in Springer, and Bichette oh. and Springer collide, and everybody's going to score. The Mariners have tied the game, and now Bichette and Springer are laid out in the outfield. The circumstances in which the Mariners tied the game in game two were unfortunate, and Springer did end up suffering a concussion and shoulder sprain. I hope he's recovering well and comes back fully healthy for the Blue Jays next season. 
As for the Mariners, they not only swept the Blue Jays, they completed the biggest road comeback in playoff history. Unfortunately, the momentum the Mariners had came to a screeching halt when they faced the Houston Astros in the ALDS. A sweep to a division rival to end a season isn't the way any playoff team wants to go. However, at the end of the day, only one team can end the year as champions. Don't overlook the overwhelming number of positives you can take away from the Mariners' season. A foundation of winning baseball began in 2021 and was built upon in 2022, something this fan base has been waiting on for two decades. We're in a new era of Seattle Mariners baseball, and for the first time in a long time, the future is bright for the Mariners. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.